Hi everyone out there, Steve here, Steel and Tech. Um, for those of you new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. Uh, please like and subscribe as always. For those of you have, who have been following my channel for a while now, thank you very much. Thanks for the support. Um, today's video is a little different. It's a bit of a torture test, if you will. Um, a lot of people have asked in the past, can you render 4K video on a Surface Pro 4? In particular, my variant is the Core i5, 8 gigs of RAM with 256 gigs of storage. Well, can you? I'm gonna put this thing to a test. Now, there are some videos out there where people edit 4K video, but they're usually like a 20 minute clip, or not a 20 minute clip, sorry, like a five minute clip, two minute clip. Can you do a longer clip? Like if you're planning on doing a short documentary or short film, is it something you can do on this thing? I don't know. I do know that re rendering 1080p video, high bit rate, it has no problem. 4K, we will find out. Now, like I said, this is a Pro 4. The Pro 5, or 2017, as they decided to call it this year, isn't much different than the origin, than the uh, Pro 4, as far as performance goes. It's a little bit better, but not as much of a gap in performance uh, benefits as there was going from the Pro 3 to the Pro 4. So we're going to do this. Let's see how well it does. Uh, and uh, I don't know. Who knows? Let's find out. Okay, now this is the video here I was talking about. It is 20 minutes and three seconds seconds long I'm editing this on um, power director 15 ultimate uh, again it's not the greatest software out there the whole idea was if it's possible to edit render produce whatever you want to call it uh, a 4k file um, and uh, how well the surface pro 4 would perform and Basically, if it can render it in 4K, it's rendering it in 4K. Yes, I would rather be using uh, Premiere Pro, but uh, at this time, I decided probably not a good idea for this particular machine. Anyway, so yeah, this video here is just a uh, time lapse, hyperlapse, whatever you want to call it, of a trip today on the highway, so I figured why not? Take camera record 4k 30 at 60 megs a second like I said and uh, let's see how well it does now I'm going to produce this render this whatever just give me a second here I am gonna do this in okay I need to go um, Let's go HAVC, sorry, and no, I want to go full 60. I can't go full 60. I need to find, I want to go full on 60. 4K. 30 at 50 megabytes a second so that's what I'm gonna render this at uh, now I'm gonna speed this up and uh, we'll see how well it does uh, let's see what we get actually I'm gonna pop up a timer here just give me a quick second. Okay, I don't know if you can see that. I'm gonna put this right on the keyboard gently. Hopefully this shows up. And start. Now, while you're watching this video, I want to note I am not a professional, not even remotely close to being a professional video editor uh, and so on. I'm an amateur. I will gladly admit it. Got no problem admitting, 
admitting it. I'm learning. Uh, I'm reading as much as I can. Uh, if anybody out there has any information uh, or a link to a good article that you think may help me, please leave it in the comment section below. Um, now, I don't know if the render time was extended because I originally shot it in XAVCS uh, 4K and then rendered it in H.264. If uh, the it would mean that it had to re-encode it into another codec, which, you know, extended the time frame. I, I don't know. Uh, if you do know, please, again, leave it, leave a comment in the comment section below. It'd be a great help. Um, any tips as well, leave them in the comment section below. Uh, now, I realize that PowerDirector isn't the most professional piece of software out there. Uh, Premiere Pro on this machine will run however it uh, would have been even longer of a render time doing that with uh, doing that video with Premiere Pro than what it already was uh, again I may have made it a longer render time by re-encoding it in H.264 as I mentioned previously um, again if you have any information it'd be a great help uh, I'm uh, still learning as I've stated. Now, I will note that this machine for the Pro 4, the i5 variant that I have here, is great for 4K. Is it as fast as like a dedicated editing desktop workstation? Absolutely not. But in comparison, you can't beat it for portability, um, especially if you're traveling and uh, you know you you have limited space for carry-on and so on you really can't go wrong yes there are other machines that are capable that are around the same size but uh well thank you and uh enjoy now also speaking to the performance uh, gains or lack thereof going from the Pro 4 to the Pro 5, the reason why I thought this video may be helpful for some is because there's a lot of people I'm sure that have the Pro 5 um, and are curious. I've seen the question asked so many times, uh, if you can edit and render 4K video, and if so, how well does it do? Um, most of the people, like I said, do a, a two minute clip and that's, you know, two to five minute clip and that's really about it. Uh, I wanted to, as I mentioned previously, do a real world type test if you wanted to use it for a short film and documentary now. Um, as many people are aware, going from the Pro 3 to the Pro 4, there was a significant jump in performance, especially, especially with regards to the lack of thermal throttling that was very present, present on the Surface Pro 3. Um, the Pro 4 perform, performs much better. However, uh, the performance gains going from the Pro 4 to the Pro, Far, Pro 5 sorry, are not as substantial as it was going from the Pro 3 to the Pro 4. Done. Five hours, 58 minutes, and 45 seconds to render a 20 minute, 3 second clip that was rendered in 4K, 30 frames per second, 60 megabits per second at H.264. The original codec that was that it was shot in was. XAVCS.